Sunday, which will be followed by our intergenerational Sunday school. Uh, and so hope you will join us for all of that next Sunday. We begin our worship this morning and our celebration of the resurrection of Jesus with a special anthem by our choir.
As the women came to the tomb, I was there. But they came with the trust that they would find a body in need of anointing. They came bearing the burial spices, which they did not have time to use on Friday because of the beginning of the Sabbath. But when they came, the stone was rolled away, and the body they trusted would be there was not. They asked God's messengers the meaning of this, and they were told, He's not here. He is risen, as he said. <coughs> Could these words be trusted? The women thought so. They ran to tell the disciples all they had seen and been told. They insisted it was true. These words could be trusted. As we come here together this morning, do we trust their words? Or do we still doubt? Let us live with trust in the angel's message. He is not here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. As the women set out for the tomb, there was only sorrow. Sorrow from what had happened on Friday. They came to anoint a body, wondering how they would be able to move the stone, wondering if the soldiers would even permit their entrance into the tomb. Even in sorrow, they needed to perform this one last act for the one they had followed. But at the tomb, the stone was already rolled away. Men in white, Messengers from God were there. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised. <clears throat> the messengers reminded them of Jesus' own prediction of his fate and how he said he would rise in three days. In celebration, they ran to tell the men the good news. He was alive! But the men didn't believe them. Only Peter and John went to the tomb, but Peter still did not understand. He could not celebrate with the women. As we come this morning, do we also remain in our sorrow, or can we celebrate the truth the women understood? Let us celebrate the message. He is not here. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partialities, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee with the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 11. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed unto you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Caiaphas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to the one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Son of Man must be handed over to the sinners, be crucified, and three days later, rise to life. And the women remembered. They went back to the eleven to say that all was fulfilled. But the men thought that, the women, that what the women said was nonsense and did not believe. Only Peter went and looked in the tomb and went home amazed. But in the evening, the eleven had other visitors, including Cleopas. They told of walking home with a stranger but explained the scriptures to them. He began with the book of Moses and continued through the prophets, reminding them that the Messiah needed to suffer the things that had said about Jesus before entering into his glory. They told the disciples it was like a burning fire within them, 
as the stranger explained all of this. Finally, the stranger broke bread with him, and they realized he was no stranger. It was Jesus. He had indeed fulfilled all of the scriptures. How ashamed they were not to have recognized it sooner. Realizing that Jesus had fulfilled all of scripture, they too were fulfilled in their lives. As we come this morning, let us put aside the shame of our past. Let us live a fulfilled life in the presence of a risen Messiah. Hear the good news. He is not here. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. A week after that incredible morning, Thomas was still in agony. The others had said Jesus had come to them last week, in the evening, but he wasn't there. They really seemed to believe it was Jesus. But how could that be? And so Thomas, remembering the agony of the cross, declared that he needed to see the scars, put his finger on them and his hand in the side where Jesus' body had been pierced. It just could not be possible. Wanting to believe and yet realizing the impossibility of it was agony for Thomas. But then it happened. Jesus was there, standing before him, and he came over to Thomas. He said, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. What joy! It was Jesus. Without having to touch him, Thomas knew. The agony was gone. Only joy remained as Thomas exclaimed, my Lord and my God. As we come this morning, do we still suffer the agony of doubting his living reality? Stop the agony. Be filled with joy. Hear the message. He is not here. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed.
Do we hear the woman's story and believe in the empty tomb? If we do not believe the women, then St. Paul is right when he says, we are to be most pitied among people. For Christ has been risen from the death, and those who follow him will likewise be risen. This is our choice. We can choose to believe in the logic of the world, and then death is victorious. Or we can choose to believe in the realities of God's promise, and then life is victorious. Then death is swallowed up in the victory of life. Let us on this day choose life, for truly the message must be heard and believed. He is not here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Trust, celebration, wonderment, fulfillment, joy, love, life. These are the voices of resurrection that we have heard this morning. These are the gifts of Jesus that we celebrate on this glorious Alleluia Day. But more than that, these are the realities in which we live every day because of the resurrection of Jesus. I saw something yesterday saying that we all live most of our lives as if it was Holy Saturday, that time in between. We don't always live in the deep sadness of Good Friday. But we also don't live most of our days in the great joy and celebration of Easter Sunday. Instead, we live usually somewhere in between, in a time of waiting, a time of anticipation, maybe even a time of preparation. Just think about what your day looked like yesterday. I would guess that for many of us, it was a day like any other. Perhaps with the added responsibilities of preparing for Easter celebrations in a variety of ways. But for the most part, Holy Saturday is a day like any other. But I also know that sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Not always, but some years, it feels weird to me to do normal things on Holy Saturday. Out of respect, I shouldn't do laundry or bake or watch TV. After hearing once again the story of Jesus' crucifixion on Friday, as we wait for the good news of resurrection on Sunday, we have this day in between. Sometimes for me, it almost feels like I'm holding my breath until Sunday morning, when I'll again hear the proclamation that he is risen. On that day, I'm caught between doubt and trust, between sorrow and celebration, between fear and wonderment, between shame and fulfillment, agony and joy, hate and love, death and life. Throughout our lives, we each move around on those spectrums. Somewhere in between those polar opposites is where we spend most of our days. Not drowning in the lowest of lows, but also not celebrating the highest of highs. We find ourselves someplace solidly in the middle. And while there's a lot about the sentiment of living most of our days on Holy Saturday that I really appreciate it, I also think there's an important distinction to make. Unlike the disciples, who lived that in-between day full of questions and uncertainty. For us, that day can be a day like any other, because we know that today is coming. We know that resurrection happened 
and is happening all around us. At our core, we are Easter people. Because Jesus died and rose again, we can live in the transformed reality that Jesus' resurrection has created for us. Being Easter people doesn't mean that we won't experience Good Friday-like days. But we experience those days through the lens of Easter. We never have a day where the resurrection hasn't happened. And that hope guides us and helps us until the gifts of this day come fully into view for us once again. We know that sin and death are defeated and that Christ is risen from the dead. We can trust the promises of our living Lord Jesus, who offers us grace and forgiveness, who promises to always be by our side. Because of this day, because Jesus rose from the dead, we never have to face a day without knowing the love, power, grace, and hope of our risen Lord. Equipped with the gifts of this day, we are empowered to step into the world in a different way. On our best days, on our worst days, and all the days in between, we carry with us the trust, celebration, wonderment, fulfillment, joy, love, and life that surrounds us today, even as we proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under the mountain's power, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and the love has triumphed over fear and death. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. For the church is persecuted, protected. Where the church is privileged, granted humility. Where the church is fractured, healing. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace. Hear, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. We pray especially today for the Soko family following the death of Kerman's brother. For Ian, Linda, Emily, Barb, Diane, Al, Larry, Tish, Patty, Kathleen, Inger, John, John, Mike, and all those we name before you now, aloud or silent. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
into your hands, most merciful God. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite any children to come up and join me for the children's message. Good morning, good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good? Awesome? Happy Easter? Thank you. So, do you see what I brought with me today? Eggs, right? A basket full of Easter eggs. What do you think Easter eggs really have to do with Easter? Uh, 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 animals? Yeah, like it's kind of a weird thing, isn't it? The Easter Bunny, right? Right? We celebrate that the Easter Bunny brings us eggs. But did you know that eggs actually have great symbolism for what this day is all about? No? New life. New life, you're right. So normally we think about eggs as being about new life, right? Yeah. And did you know that there is a long, long history of people giving each other eggs at this time of year to celebrate new life? As we're in this season of spring, we celebrate new life and that Jesus just hold on a second. They are real eggs. So we celebrate new life. But you know, we do you guys dye eggs? Do you dye eggs at your house? Yeah? Some of you do, some of you don't. Well, you can see in here there are eggs of all different colors, right? And there is one denomination in our Christian church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, they dye eggs red. Why do you think we might be talking about red around Easter? Because Jesus died for us, right? And so we they dyed eggs red, and then other colors started to come into play too. What other colors do you see in there? Pink, Pink green, purple, purple the yellow. Other colors are just for fun. They're just for fun? Do you think those other colors might mean something too? Yep, that's some Easter grass, too. Pretend grass. Pretend grass. Yeah, it's not real grass. grass. <laughs> so some of these other colors come into play. We often we think about yellow as being the color of resurrection. We have white on our altar, but white and yellow are the colors of Easter. Or maybe yellow mm -hmm. could be friendship. Yellow could be friendship. Yep. When, we, when you see green things, what do you think about? Grass. Grass. You think about things growing? Plants, right? Plants, yeah. We think about, when we think about green, we think about things growing, right? And so all of these eggs can have, can have some symbolism to them. And so we have these eggs that are all kinds of different symbols of what we celebrate with Jesus rising from the dead today. And you, there's, there's one that's broken? All right. Well, so the other thing that I learned, have you guys ever heard about an Easter egg roll? Roll Easter eggs. You roll Easter eggs. They do that at the White House every year. And they, they roll the Easter eggs. I don't know the whole thing. But I learned this week while I was doing some research about Easter eggs that part of the symbolism of that is the stone being rolled away from the tomb. So we have all kinds of symbolism of what eggs do for us, right? So for those of you who do dye eggs, what's the process? What do you have to do to dye Easter eggs? Uh, you have to get color dye, and you might roll the eggs in it. Okay, you get color dye, and you roll the eggs in it. Do you use okay. eggs right out of the fridge? No. What do you have to do to first? Sometimes. I use a Easter egg Oh, you use fake Easter eggs? You don't get yours out of the fridge? Yeah, because it's all We have hard-boiled You have hard-boiled eggs at your house, huh? That is probably a good move, right? Because if you don't hard-boil them first, they're really fragile, aren't they? Yeah. 
And they put them on their head because they could break, right? So what if I told you that I do I do boil these eggs? Would you be worried about that? I wouldn't care You don't think I could die them without boiling them? So should we should we test it out? So I brought a bowl. Is anybody brave enough to put their hand underneath this egg as I break it? Yeah. Yeah? You want to put your hands under there? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm going to break this egg. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Can everybody see? Yeah. All right. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> what was in there? That was a sparkle. That was sparkles. That was not a real one. Is that what you expected to find in that egg? No. Okay. You want to break that?
invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray together our offertory prayer. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Proclaim us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Love that exceeds every hope and dream. 
love, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table, where all are welcome. You may be seated.
Please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and forever. Amen.
under the table, it's already full. <laughs> I know, but we brought all those up. Well, you can try it. And I think it's full. Let me get this camera off because you guys are all on.